Hello, good evening, and welcome to St. Mary's, where tonight on WOSN, we'll bring you a Western Buckeye League matchup between the visiting Wapak Redskins and the homestanding St. Mary's Rough Riders. I'm Garrett Seawright. I'll be joined by Scott Nurse tonight for all the action here tonight in this WBL Week 3 matchup, uh, Week 2 of the Western Buckeye League season. And, Scott, we've got an electric atmosphere here tonight, big rivalry contest between these two schools. Should be a fun one here in St. Yeah, Mary's. no question about it. The stadium is packed. There's a lot of excitement around this game. Both of these teams are excellent teams, so I think we're in for a great game tonight. And when you talk about the excellence of both squads, what do you view as the keys to the game tonight for, for both squads of who's going to leave here with a victory? Well, I've got three keys tonight. Number one is strength versus strength. St. Mary's has a top rushing offense in the WBL, 288 yards a game. Wapak is the number one in the WBL in total defense at only 207 yards a game. The trenches are where this game is going to be decided, yep. line play. Number two, my ball, value it. Both teams are minus three in turnovers through two games. Both teams will eat up the clock with running games, so possessions are going to be limited. You cannot turn it over. You must value every possession and not give your opponent extra possessions. One possession could decide this game. And then third, special teams. St. Mary's has the best punter in the WBL in Jay Schaefer. He averages almost 43 yards a punt. St. Mary's also has the highest punt return average in the WBL at almost 42 yards a return. Special teams, especially the punt game, will have a huge impact on field position, which can lead to additional scoring opportunities. Wapak has to cover punts. And we've seen low scoring affairs the last four times these two squads have met. We'll see if we get that again here tonight from St. Mary's. We'll step aside, we'll come back, we'll have first quarter action for you here between Wapak and St. Mary's on WOSN. Welcome back to St. Mary's High School as we've got football tonight here on WOSN, the Auglaise County matchup between Wapak and St. Mary's. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee, for all your catering needs, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Also, instant replays tonight brought to you by Layfeld Welding and Industrial Supplies. They've got locations in Coldwater and Greenville as we get set for this Auglaise County matchup between the Wapak Redskins and the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Again, I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Scott Nurse. And Scott, we saw St. Mary's win the coin toss and elect to receive. They wanted the ball right away. It's something we don't see a whole lot in high school football anymore. A lot of schools defer till the second half, but St. Mary's wanted the football. Apparently, they want to set the tone. Well, they, it's, that's confidence. They, they want the football first. They want the first opportunity to score. And, um, you know, why not jump out if they can? get an early look at the offense. So St. Mary's uh, will start the, tonight's ball game with the football after we get all teed up and ready to go here. Uh, and the, the Rough Riders off to a 2-0 start uh, under second year head coach Bo Fry as you see them get set for the kickoff return and Wapak comes in 1-1 one and one, but you know Wapak's one loss to a Marion local squad who many would believe is the you know the favorite to win a state championship like they have about half of the time since <laughs> since the turn of the century. Yeah and I was at that game actually Mark Shine and I did that game and it was a truly competitive great game. Uh, Marion local pulled it out but Wapak showed they are a team to be reckoned with. I, I think these both of these teams are going to be very evenly matched and I, I think we're in for a great football game tonight. The weather's perfect. It's a little yeah. warm. It's a little warm, but it'll cool off here when the sun goes down. Kyle Beach has the football teed up for Wampok, and uh, he's got quite the boot on him. He can uh, he can put that thing in the in the end zone very easily. So uh, Kyle Beach has the football teed up, and uh, St. Mary's has three guys back deep standing on their own goal line as we get set to kick off here in week three of the high school football season between Wapak and St. Mary's. Beach will send it away. It'll be shy of the goal line and it will be returned by the Rough Riders. We'll bring it out to the 15 yard line. Runs into a pile of its own humanity. Bray Brayden Sullivan just shy of the 18 yard line and that is where Wapak, or excuse me, St. Mary's will begin their first drive of the night. Yeah, nice, nice coverage there by Wapak on the defensive side of the football. So their own 18-yard line is where St. Mary's where it will begin. Their offensive line from left to right sounds like this. Xavier LeClaire, Greg Felver, Caleb Miller, Trent Wyckoff, Braden Saylor. Their quarterback is Cody Wallace, a six-foot-three junior. And they'll run that old wing tee with Aiden Hinkle, Braden Sullivan, and Colton Mabry getting the bulk of the carries for the Rough Riders. You'll see Wallace go under center in that wing tee, and he'll hand off. Bounces to the outside as Keegan Sharp 
and he's brought down for a loss of about a yard and a half there on first down. Well, as I mentioned, the Wapak defense is, is a pretty tough defense, and uh, first play out of the shoot, nice job there of stuffing the run. So Braden Sullivan will check in for Keegan Sharp. Is, uh, you, the, the wing tee, Scott, allows you to kind of try to hit outside, and w once they key on the outside, you go up the middle. Once they key on the middle, you go, try to go outside. So uh, first play of the game, a loss of about a yard and a half there on first down. He'll turn around and hand to Hinkle this time. Still on his feet as he'll be brought down. Joey Truesdale in on the stop for Wapak, one of the several Redskin defenders you saw there making the stop. Wapak's defense sounds like this. Mikey Lee, Tyler Hauser, Jaden Rampula, and Caden Ware are the front four. Corbin Mitchell, Connor Bextro, and Joey Truesdale are the linebackers. Grant Jolly, Nate Metzger, uh, Jordan Schneider, and Will Campbell will play the defensive backfield here as we approach third and eight now for the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Yeah, and you'll see uh, against this wing tee, a lot of times Walt Buck's going to have eight in the box. It'll look more like a 4-4 than a 4-3. They'll sling it out to Keegan Sharp. He's at the 21-yard line, takes a big hit from the Wapak defenders. Is, uh, that's... Tyler Hauser coming in from his defensive tackle stop spot to make the stop, and that looks like it's going to force a St. Mary's punt. Well, I like the play call, though. I really like those uh, quick hitters to the outside on, when you're going to pass the football. It's a high percentage completion. It allows you to get an athlete in space. And a lot of times, if they can make one guy miss, it can turn into a big play. Jay Schaefer will be back deep to punt for St. Mary's. We talked about it in the pregame show. He's the lar longest average punter in the Western Buckeye League, and he'll get his first crack at it here in the first quarter. Schaefer, a nice end-over-end -end punt. Going to be caught at the 40-yard line by the Redskins as Grant Jolly's in the open field, and he brings it to the near sideline. Out into the 30-yard line, a nice return by the sophomore, and Wapak will be in great starting field position for their first drive. Well, we talked about St. Mary's and their ability to cover punts and uh, their ability to return punts, but here Wapak gets a nice return from Jolly. He just uh, finds a crease up the middle and he's able to return it all the way to the 30-yard line. Excellent field position for Wapak. You see Jolly there in the open field on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Great starting field position for the yeah, Redskins. Yeah, I, th I think he could have got a little more there. He kind of tripped up a little. So Caleb Moyer, the starting quarterback for the Redskins, will fire on his first play of the game. Goes through the hands of Will Campbell, and Wapak comes out firing on play number one. Yeah, I like that. Uh, maybe a little bit of adrenaline flow in there. You overthrew him a little bit, a little bit high. You know, you're excited. This is a big game. There's a huge crowd here tonight. And uh, first play from the offensive line, I think he just uh, had a little too much energy on that pass. Caleb Moyer, a six foot one, 170 pound freshman. Of course, his dad, Travis, the ninth year head coach of the Wapak Redskins. Wapak's front five, the offensive line, Ryan Price, Jacob Kirkpatrick, Grant Childress, Nate Schneider, and Tyler Hauser as they'll send Jace Naus as the wing here on number 17 in white. You'll see at the bottom of your screen. And I think we've got a timeout here called by the Wapak Redskins after their first play of the game. We'll step aside here. Still scoreless in the first quarter. Wapak starts at their own 30-yard line when we return on WOSN. Coming back out of the timeout, tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419 225-6061 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Second play of the game coming for the Wampong Redskins. Moyer in the shotgun. He'll fake the handoff to Grant Jolly and will give to Jolly. Jolly at the 30-yard line. He is swallowed up by the St. Mary's defense. Braden Sullivan you know, on the stop for the Rough Riders, as was Caden Sharp from his linebacker spot. Yeah, just a nice job there by St. Mary's defense to read that. At the mess point, Moyer really didn't have an option uh, because they had both options covered. He went ahead and handed it off, but no game there. So Wapak faced with third and eight here after the incomplete pass and then a two-yard gain on second down. So Moyer will be in the shotgun as they'll send two wide receivers here to the bottom of your screen and one to the Moyer's left as he'll take the shotgun snap. Looks to fire. Has Jolly in the middle of the field. Slips a tackle at the 15. Still the open field. Brought down at the seven-yard line. Grant Jolly, a couple of big plays here for Wapak. Has them inside the, the red zone. Well, I really like Caleb Moyer. I think he's an outstanding quarterback. He's only a freshman, but doesn't look or play like a freshman. You see him put the ball right where it needs to be there for Jolly. He's 18 to 28 on the year, 57% and 191 yards in two games. They're in the Mats heating and cooling red zone here as the Redskins inside the 10-yard line looking to put themselves on the scoreboard 
first here in this Anglais County matchup. Moyer in the shotgun. He'll hand off to Naus. Naus goes straight up the middle of the field to the five-yard line. Maybe about the four is where he'll be spotted. But uh, Jace Naus, the junior, has a looking for his first touchdown run of the season. And came up just a few yards shy there. Yeah, you see St. Mary's in a 5-2, and they actually bring an outside linebacker. So they had eight or nine guys in the box. Running up the middle is going to be tough. Clock will continue to tick here in the first quarter as Moyer has, it, it certainly seems like he's got a pretty strong command of the offense. Well, you know, growing up in the household of a head coach, you're going to hear and talk and, and look at football all the time. So you, you know his football IQ is off the charts. Send Mextro in motion, and Moyer will keep it himself off left tackle, and he will walk into the end zone. A five-yard touchdown run by Caleb Moyer. Puts Wapak on the board first here in this Western Buckeye League matchup. Moyer with the keeper in for the touchdown. Take a look at the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Just an easy quarterback power off the left side, Scott. He found a room and got across the goal line. Yeah, and that's his first rushing touchdown of the year, so I'm sure he's pretty excited about that. They'll have something to talk about in the Moyer household tonight. So 8.01 to go here in this first quarter, and they'll send Kyle Beach on to, for the extra point. And extra points tonight are brought to you by Pantry Pride. And it's up through the uprights and good, making it 7 0 Wapak here over St. Mary's on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Cook and Son Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old time service since 1978. Find them on Facebook or call 419 738 8956. And also, for tonight's presenting sponsor is Minster Bank. We're proud of our past and look forward to promising to a promising future. St. Hey. Mary's looking for a promising future and they on their second offensive drive of the night is after Wapak goes seven plays and 30 yards to punch it in first, take this seven nothing lead. Kyle Beach kick it at the goal line and that will be a touchback and St. Mary's will begin their second drive at the 20 yard line. Well, if you're Wapakoneta, you really like the way this game started. St. Mary's won the toss. You got a stop. You got a big return by Jolly to set up you in excellent field position, and then you convert that to a score early in the first quarter with eight minutes to go. They're up 7 nothing. Let's see how St. Mary's responds now, how they answer. In the last four times these two have met, uh, they've been one-score games. Two of them have gone to overtime. So uh, I think it's uh, an expectation that this will be a tight matchup throughout the course of tonight's game. St. Mary's will send Sullivan in motion. They'll turn and hand off to Hinkle off right tackle. He's out to the 25-yard line before he's stopped by a whole host of Redskins. It's Mextro and, and Corbin Mitchell in on the stop for Wapak. Well, one of the things about this wing T offense, you see you got three – running backs in motion, usually one or maybe no receivers. And really, there's a lot of ball handling that goes into this, a lot of deception. You know, one hand looks like it's handing off to the right, and they hand the ball off to the left. You really got to keep your head and your eyes up if you're a defensive player for Wapak. Rough Riders will pitch to Aiden Hinkle, his first or second carry of the night. Slips off a tackler, and Hinkle is still loose. Out to the 50-yard line before he is brought down by Jordan Schneider. Made the touchdown saving tackle, but Aiden Hinkle, a slippery little fella, and he brings it to the near sideline and gets out to midfield. Yeah, Aiden Hinkle here is the number one running back in the WBL right now averages 117 and a half yards per game. He's got four touchdowns. That's 7.1 yards per carry. He gets more than that on this one. Yeah, Pure Hinkle, effort. <laughs> Hinkle with a 26-yard carry there. Gives him a first down. They'll go right back to Hinkle on first down, and he picks up maybe half a yard or so. First down tonight brought to you by Binkley Real Estate, and uh, St. Mary's picks up their first first down there on that 26-yard carry by Hinkle. Well, but you're absolutely right, uh, Garrett. A, a lot of it's built on tendency. So they, you saw they ran a dive right there. They didn't pick up much, but they had Hinkle on the outside on the quick pitch, uh, a quick toss last play. So they'll, they'll mix it up inside, outside. Here we go with Hinkle on the outside again. Hinkle out to the 40-yard line. Going to be close to a first down. He's going to be about a yard and a half shy, and that will bring up third and very short here for the blue and gold. You see on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay, he slips through that first tackle and then gets out to the 40-yard line where you see a couple of guys, Connor Mextro, holding on for dear life to bring him down. 
Well, the thing about the wing tee, a lot of times, other than the dive play, for most of the plays, you're going to have at least one lead blocker, sometimes two. So that really is a great advantage to the running back. A lot of times they'll get two, three, four yards before they're ever hit by a defender. Third and two for the Rough Riders here. They'll give it to Hinkle, and he's got the first down easily and more out to the 35-yard line. But it's another Binkley Real Estate first down for the Rough Riders. Yeah, but you see St. Mary's mixing it up there. They went inside with the dive, outside with Hinkle, came right back with the up, up the middle dive play with Hinkle. What happens is that Wapak defense starts to spread out, looking for the outside, and then those gaps in the middle become a little wider. So it's first and 10 as the upcoming play will be the sixth of the drive here for the Rough Riders and they'll hand off. That's Colton Mayberry, or excuse me, not Mayberry, it's Logan Compton getting his first carry of the night. Nope, that is that is Colton Mayberry, 34, 31. They look a little, a little similar this high up, but uh, Colton Mayberry, his first carry, and you take a look at the replay, slipped off one tackler, but then Jordan Schneider right there to make the stop for, for Wapak. Yeah, and really Caden Ware was responsible for this play. He got in the backfield, disrupted the whole play, and didn't make the tackle, but he held on long enough to let his buddies come and clean up the clean up the mess. So second and 13 upcoming here for, for St. Mary's. Thrown the ball just that one time on the swing pass on the third play of the game. Might see them be forced to put it in the air here over the course of the next two plays or so as they'll hand off to Hinkle off right tackle. He is picked up and driven right back into the ground. Big stop there by Mextro, I believe, on the stop for Wapak, but he just picked him up and put him right back down. You see on the Lakefield Industrial Welding Supplies replay, <laughs> he will drive him right back into the turf. Well, Mexroth is a real deal, and uh, yeah, I mean, he can he can play defense. He likes to hit. I've seen him now the, twice this year, and uh, you know, he, he's, the, he's the real deal on that side of the football. Third and nine here for St. Mary's as we go under five minutes to play here in this opening quarter as they've queued up a nice chunk of clock here on this drive. Wallace fakes the handoff, will roll to his right, has to avoid the defender and can't. He is swallowed up by Tyler Hauser on the sack. A big defensive play there by the Redskins. And it'll be interesting to see what St. Mary's does here in kind of no man's land. Looks like they're sending the punt unit off. Well, Wapak number 10, Jolie, did a great job of defending his receiver. Even, even if he gets outside there and has an opportunity to throw, he was covered. There was nothing going on out there. And then the uh, Wapak edge just swallowed him up. So the Rough Riders will send Jay Schaefer out to punt here on fourth and 15. Knee-high snap. He'll try to get it up high and drop it inside the 20-yard line. It's caught by Jolly, and he tries to make one man miss, spun down. And he'll be brought down at the 15-yard line. So a, a little better punt coverage there by the Rough Riders on their second opportunity. Yeah, and you got to have a sure-handed guy back there. You know, when you're catching the punt on the 10-yard line, it's coming out of the sky, falling out of the sky. A lot of times, them are knuckleballs. They're shaking and curving and twisting and everything else. And, uh, you know, you got herds of guys running at you. That's a tough thing back there. Jolly does a nice job. Jolly, just a sophomore, was in the battle for the starting quarterback job before Caleb Moyer won it here for the Redskins. Of course, Moyer. Scored the touchdown on the last drive for the Redskins as they'll start from their own 15. They'll send Nelson in motion to the far side of the field, and Moyer will keep it himself off left tackle. He's got a little bit of room to run out to the 20-yard line. To about the 22, the ball is loose, and he didn't, a ball still loose, and the Redskins pounce on it at their own 12-yard line. Loose for a very long time, got a couple of bounces, but looks like number 70, Jacob Kirkpatrick, jumped on it for the Redskins. Yeah, they only lost about three yards, so this is pretty amazing because Moyer gained about five or six or seven, and then he fumbled and it went back about ten yards. You they are very fortunate. Course there, and uh, the ball's still loose, and then finally Kirkpatrick pounces on it back at the 12-yard line. So you're right, Scott, they are fortunate, one, that um, it's – their football, but then two that you know they only lost three yards on the play. Well, we talked about that. One of the keys to the game, right, is turnovers. They're both minus three on the year. They cannot have turnovers. Wapak will hand off to Connor Mextro. He goes straight up the middle of the field. They're still pushing, still pushing near out to the 20 yard line. Brought down about the 19. Uh, Jason Alps on a carry, excuse me, for Wapak. But uh, a nice gain there on second down that makes it third and a little bit more manageable. Yeah, it looked like a rub rugby scrum here with this <laughs> did. big giant pile of folks, and uh, that's exactly what it looked like. Well, you, you hear a lot of football coaches say low man wins, and you see it there from Mouse where he just kept driving, driving, driving to make it third and about nine, third and seven, excuse me. 
He spent time in the weight room at the squat rack, no question about it. So Moyer will be in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, Mextro to his right on third and seven. He'll turn and fire to his left. It's caught, can't slip the tackle though, as Will Campbell made the catch, but he's shoved out of bounds. It'll be fourth and about five. I tell you, I, I really like Moyer. He's got a good arm, he's got a quick release. He steps into his throw, puts it right on the money. Just, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a shorter play. Wasn't able to turn that upfield and get the necessary yardage. So Wapak unable to secure a Bakley real estate first down. Looks like they'll send the punt unit on as Kyle Beach will be back deep to punt for the Redskins. Braden Sullivan, I believe, the rough rider back deep to return the punt. He's Fourth and four. He's dangerous. He's got 66 yards and returns. Well, he returned a uh, field goal, a blocked field goal against Defiance last week for a touchdown as it is caught at their own 45-yard line. And Sullivan's in the open field out to his own, out to the Wapak 45-yard line. So about a 10-yard return there, but just for a brief moment, and look, things got a little exciting as when Braden Sullivan gets the football in his hands, he does some fun things with it. Well, and again, I, I come back to the punt game because on the possession before St. Mary's punted the football away. They were on their, about their own 30-yard line. They've now exchanged the punt, held defensively, and fielded the punt with a nice return, and they the field position now has shifted about 20 yeah. yards. Well, you're absolutely correct, Scott. It's St. Mary's goes to work offensively. They'll hand off to Aiden Hinkle. He gets up about a half a yard there on the carry after the handoff from Cody Wallace, and it'll be second and long here for the Riders. Well, and you see Wallace carry out his fake on that, uh, you know, that fake after he hands it off, he'll run around the end there. Uh, I guarantee you there's an offensive coach watching that to see if Wapak's covering that. If they're not, look for him to uh, pull it away at the mesh point, keep it, and, and, and take off to the outside. Scott, when you look at St. Mary's offensive line, 370, 225, 260, 165, 305, they got some big boys up front. Well, if you're going to run the wing tee, you got to have big boys. They pitch it out to... Hinkle, he wasn't looking for it, and Cody Ware comes up with a football for the Redskins. Hinkle looked like he was operating on a fake. Wallace turned, pitched it to him, and Cody Ware pounces on it for the Redskins. Take a look at this Layfeld Industrial Welding Supply. Hinkle looked like he couldn't believe that the ball was flipped over to him, and Caden Ware pounces on the football for Wapak. That's a big play for the Redskins. Yeah, apparently some miscommunication there on one, one or the other. Either one wasn't supposed to get it or or uh, he was supposed to get it and didn't didn't know it. But um, yeah, that's a huge turnover. St. Mary's with excellent field position, turn it right back over to Wapak. So the Wapak gains about 25 yards in the possession exchange. So Wapak will go under center, wing T themselves as Moyer goes under center with Naus and Mextro behind him. He fumbled the football, scoops it up, and Moyer's in the open field. He's got a Bankley Real Estate first down and more, brought down at the 42-yard line. Uh, crisis averted, and then <laughs> things go Wapak's way there on first down. Well, they got to hold on to the football. Both teams, um, it's huge. I mean, they're, they're really just getting away with it, with it right now, but Moyer, smart, picks up the ball and just uh, realizes a broken play, don't do anything, see what you can get. He picks up about 12 yards. And I don't know if either of those are, you know, sweat related or anything like that, or maybe a lack of concentration. And uh, but that one went a little better for Wapak than the previous fumble did for St. Mary's. Yeah, and it could be. It's pretty humid out here. It's pretty wet. Now with the handoff off the left side. He's cut down just shy of the 35-yard line. Is uh, didn't see the number on the St. Mary's Rough Rider who made the stop, but that's a nice open field tackle there by St. Mary's as you see the Layfeld Welding Industrial Supplies replay. Now off the left side, and Keegan Sharp just goes and cuts his knees out from under him. Yeah, now averages just under five yards a carry. He gets up about seven or eight on that first carry, and that's uh, that's ideal position. You know, it's, for, it's second down now in about three. Uh, you got a lot of plays you can choose from. So the Redskins. Slightly disjointed as they get set as Naus will go and they're going to call a timeout. A Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Wapak Redskins. They're second here in the first quarter with 1.21 to go. Wapak leads St. Mary 7 0 on WOSN. I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. They are local, fast, and friendly. Check them out at icsigns.net. Also, tonight's game brought to you by Matt's Heating and Cooling. The Red Zone is sponsored by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 
So a pair of timeouts taken here in the first quarter. Uh, Scott by the Wapak, where they've just been a bit disjointed when they break the huddle and not exactly certain where they want to line up. Well, I'm sure Coach Moyer didn't want to use two timeouts in the first quarter, but uh, they've had a couple mishaps. They've, they've kind of lost the football a couple times. Everybody needs to be on the same page. Moyer off left tackle on the same play that they had on the Allen and Davis Insurance touchdown run. Tried to get the ball stripped, did St. Mary's as Keegan Sharp stripped uh, on a play the last time out, but uh, pushes Moyer back a couple of yards, and that'll make it third and a little longer than Wapak wanted. Well, you're going to see on this replay, Moyer's in the picture and then about seven blue shirts, and that's all you see. Then you can see Sharp trying to rip that football out as it was starting to go down, as Moyer was starting to go down, and that'll make it third and five after the second and three. So under a minute to play here in this first quarter, Redskins with a 7-0 advantage over St. Mary's on our least famous recipe scoreboard. Important play here for the Redskins. Moyer in a shotgun, two receivers to his right, as is Mextro. Moyer looking left, pump fakes, and will go the double move. Looking for Jolly, nearly intercepted by Sharp, but a penalty flag comes in. We'll see who that pass interference call is likely on. Yeah, just a little hitch and go. It'll be interesting to see. It might have been defensive pass interference because it looks like uh, the flag was thrown right about five yards off of the line of scrimmage about the time that Moyer hitched. And you can see Sharp had a chance at the interception there. It goes off his fingertips. But the penalty flag is a hold against the St. Mary's defense, and that will give Wapak a Binkley Real Estate first down. Yeah, I believe if the receiver is within a certain amount of yards from the line of scrimmage and the defensive back uh, holds him in this case, that's what he was called for as opposed to a pass interference call. So the ball spotted at the 23-yard line as Grant Childress, the 5'10 senior center, will stand over the football. As Wapak has a first and 10 here, Moyer will go under center in the wing tee. They'll send Truesdale and Grant Hauser back to the left side of the formation. And they'll turn and hand it off that way to Naus. Naus had a hold just for a moment out to the 20-yard line before he swallowed up by a whole host of St. Mary's Rough Riders. Hayden Davis first from his middle linebacker spot. You know, this is a great facility here, Garrett. But one of the things that I absolutely love is you get a good look at this replay on this. Naus doing a good job of covering up the football with yeah. both arms. Uh, but as you get a look at this, th this facility is, is awesome. But one of the things I love is they have the digital, uh, the, the, the digital, um, what do I want to say, a chain gang. So oh, you're yep, able yep. to see exactly how many yards it is for a first down, all that good stuff. It's pretty cool. We played one quarter. Wapak leads St. Mary's 7-0 here on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Allen Davis Insurance. Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. Also, extra points sponsored by Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service that you can count on as Wapog looks for a pair of Allen Davis Insurance touchdowns and Pantry Pride extra points here as they are now in the Mats Heating and Cooling Red Zone at the 20-yard line. And uh, this drive, uh, a little different from the first one where they got the ball to 30-yard line, and yet they find themselves in the red zone here, Scott, putting a, putting a nice little drive together. Yeah, they're up 7-0, and they're in the red zone, and you would think just by looking at that, that that they've dominated the time of possession, but they really haven't. St. Mary's in that first quarter had it for 6:45, and Wapak only 5 minutes and 15 seconds. Moyer in the shotgun will keep it himself, gets through the first line, brings it to the near side, slips past a tackler inside the 10 and brought down from behind. But a nice run there by Caleb Moyer, and he's got it inside the 10-yard line as he was brought down by Jamal Kessler for St. Mary's. He might have made a touchdown-saving tackle there. Yeah, Moyer will run the football about 10 times a game. The challenge with him, though, is he only uh, shows 40 yards on the year, but you know, you have to couple that with when he takes a sack, he loses right. yardage that way. So normally he's a pretty productive runner on the offensive side and another weapon in that Wapakoneta backfield. So Moyer will go under center this time with Nouse and Mextro behind him. And they'll hand off to Nouse. Nouse slips one tackle inside the five, still turning those legs, trying to get to the goal line. Did he get there? He's just shy of the goal line. Didn't get the Allen Davis insurance touchdown on that one, but it's going to be second and goal for the Redskins. 
Manaus just doesn't go down. He, he just doesn't go down, especially on first contact. You get a look here. There's two or three St. Mary's defenders that all got a body on him, and he continues to move forward, protecting the football, looking to try to get in the end zone. Great look there from our WOSN crew on that Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Second and goal from the one-yard line here for the Redskins, looking to punch it in as they'll go under center. Wing T once again, handoff, stopped just shy of the goal line. A fantastic defensive play by one of the guys in blue. Didn't see the number, but they hand off to Mextro, and he is cut down at the one-yard line. Yeah, that's Braden Sullivan, number 45 from the linebacker spot, steps in, fills the gap, and puts the hit. What a fantastic play by Sullivan. So third and goal from inside the one-yard line upcoming here for the Wapak Redskins. Mextrell had a pair of one-yard touchdown runs last week and the 14-7 win over Ottawa Glandorf. See if they give it to him here. They'll give it to Moyer. His second touchdown run of the night makes it 13-0 Wapak from one yard out. Well, I had a feeling Moyer was going to take it. You saw the, 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 his tell. He kind of moved his left leg back to, to like getting a starter's block and just followed his left guard into the end zone. Great job by the offensive line. You see the ball come loose a little bit, but that really doesn't matter. He crossed the plane. So a one-yard touchdown run by Caleb Boyer. The Allen Davis Insurance touchdown as they'll trot on for the Pantry Pride extra point. As Preston Myers on, the hold is bad, though, and the Redskins will have to fire drill it. They'll fire it into the end zone. Did he catch it? He did. That's a two-point conversion for Wapak, and that is about as good as things can go for the Redskins. You get a, a rough snap. They practice that probably once or twice every day, a couple times on Thursday, and it goes to perfection for the Redskins. They got a 15-0 lead now. You take a look at the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. I believe that's Connor Mextro who caught the football for the two-point conversion, and you see the celebration. Things going Wapak's way here in the first in the sec second quarter. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Garrett. Everything is going Wapak's way right now. And, uh, you know, a good job by St. Mary's to get penetration on that extra point. And, uh, you know, Wapak makes him pay. Redskins lead 15-0 over St. Mary's here on WOSN. First downs tonight are brought to you by Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Wapak picking up a couple of Binkley Real Estate first downs on that last drive to go up 15-0. Over the St. Mary's Rough Riders as Kyle Beach has the football teed up for the Redskins, and he'll send it deep. It'll bounce and go out of bounds, and that's one of the first uh, first plays there. Didn't go Wapak's way in a while. Well, and a good opportunity for St. Mary's to set up shop at the 35. Uh, good field position. So they'll be at their own 35-yard line, yeah, which is uh, some of St. Mary's best field position of the night. So the Rough Riders got to get something going here offensively, Scott. They, they had a, a pretty decent drive put together on the last drive, but sawed it out on the, uh, on the sack there on third down, but um, put together their best drive of the night, the last drive out, but, but it hasn't resulted in any points yet. Well, they got to hold on to the football. That's that's number one. We talked about that at the top of the game. Both teams were minus three. We've seen Wapak fumble it a couple times and been fortunate to get it back. St. Mary's last possession fumbled it, gave it uh, gave it to Wapak, gave them that extra possession. Straight T backfield for the Rough Riders, and they'll hand it to Keegan Sharp trying to get him outside. He's out to the 40-yard line, to the 41-yard line before he's brought down by Caden Ware and Mikey Lee in the stop for Wapak. Yeah, nice, nice little cutback move here. You see him put his right foot into the turf and just cut back inside his blockers there and gets a, about five yards on a nice nice run, just finding the crease. So that'll make it second and four on the six-yard carry there by Keegan Sharp. I'll turn around and hand it off to Aiden Hinkle this time. Hinkle still muscling for a Binkley Real Estate first down, just shy of the midfield stripe. He'll be stopped at the 49-yard line. Hinkle's tough. I mean, he, he's he's number one in the WBL for a reason. You can see it here. There's three or four Wapak defenders draped all over him. He continues to push forward, stays low, and uh, picks up extra yards even after two or three Wapak defenders are hanging on him. And you see just those legs constantly moving for Hinkle, who's a uh, uh, senior and played a lot of football here for the Rough Riders over the course of the last three years. 
Wallace will go under center once again. They'll hand off to Sullivan. Sullivan in the open field out to the 40-yard line. Has one guy to beat. Tripped up. Can he stay on his feet? He got to the 30 before he shoved out of bounds. But a big play by Brayton Sullivan gives St. Mary's another Binkley Real Estate first down. Well, we saw him make a great play defensively uh, on the last series, and this time it's on the other side of the football. You see a lot of that uh, in Northwest Ohio where you got athletes on both sides of the football. Just a nice run by Sullivan. Even the, the ability to <laughs> regain his, his footing there after being, near, being nearly tripped up. Yeah, that's happened to me where you start to lose your footing, you can't get it back no matter how you try. Sullivan takes his carry as well off the far sideline. Gain of about five yards as he'll stay inbounds. But that's another nice run there by Braden Sullivan, the 5'11 senior. And you see on this drive, St. Mary's has had three outside runs, three pitches, and then they've had Hinkle up the middle. So they're trying to mix it up and uh, so far doing a pretty good job of it. Clock approaching eight and a half minutes to play here in this first half. St. Mary's trying to get, get an Allen Davis insurance touchdown of their own to cut that lead as it's 15-0 Redskins. Wallace under center once again on the wing tee. They'll give it to Sullivan again. Sullivan off, right tackle to the 20-yard line. Looks like he's going to be just right at the first down marker. Yeah, and I think if St. Mary's can score on this possession, it would do so much for their uh, – you know, their confidence and, and for the momentum of this game. Right now it favors Wapak, but St. Mary's chipping away at it for sure. Third and less than a yard upcoming here, Scott. Do, do you not get cute, just hand it up the middle and let Aiden Hinkle get you two feet, or uh, you, you try something here on third and two feet? Yeah, I think if you weren't down two scores, you might try a, a, a pass play, see if the defenders fall asleep. But I think in this case, you're going to be safe. You're going to get the first down, keep the drive alive. Cody Wallace takes the snap and just shoves straight ahead. He'll pick up the Bankley Real Estate first down and move the chains inside the Matt's heating and cooling red zone. So another run play for St. Mary's. Yes, they pick up the first down, and things certainly feeling a little better on this go around, Scott, than than uh, the last previous two drives. Yeah, and we haven't mentioned the referee crew. They they've uh, done a nice job thus far in the game. It's Chris Beckstead, who's the referee. John Webb is the umpire. Linesman's Harold Hitchcock. Line judge is Mike Holtzapple, and the back judge is Nate Saintignan. St. Mary's off left tackle. Give it off the left side as Aiden Hinkle picks up another carry. Hinkle now with nine carry, or 10 carries, excuse me, 62 yards here in the first half, but just a one-yard gain on that 10th carry of the evening for Aiden Hinkle. Yeah, and credit that offensive line for St. Mary's, Xavier LeClaire, Greg Felver, Caleb Miller, Trent Wyckoff, and Braden Saylor doing an excellent job giving these running backs lanes to move this football down the field. Straight T backfield for the Rough Riders behind Cody Wallace on second and nine. They'll give to Hinkle up the gut once again. He has swallowed up Jaden Rampula in on the stop, as was Tyler Hauser. The heart of that Wapak defense with Tyler Hauser, Jaden Rampula, and Connor Mextro, certainly one of the more tenacious ones you'll see in a Western Buckeye. Well, I just gave the offensive line a big shout out, and, and Wapak uh, rose to the challenge and, uh, you know, shut it down right away. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here for the Rough Riders, faced with third and eight with the ball at the 15-yard line as we approach six minutes to go here in this first half, trailing 15-0 against their heated rival, the Wapak Redskins, and another good opportunity here for the Rough Riders to put some points on the board, but third and long is the, is the face. Yeah, look for something on the wide side of the field. St. Mary's is going to take a timeout here. So a Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the St. Mary's Rough Riders. They trail 15-0 against the Wampong Redskins here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampong and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Also, instant replace tonight brought to you by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies. They've got locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. Third and eight upcoming here, Scott, for the St. Mary's Rough Riders at the 15-yard line. Yeah, and that was probably a good timeout. This is a huge play in the game. It's third and eight, probably in four-down territory, but still third and eight. Uh, you're down inside your own 20, less than six minutes to go in the second quarter, down two scores. They need to convert this. 
So the Rough Riders will come out in the wing tee once again as Caleb Miller stands over the football, waiting to deliver it to Cody Wallace. Wallace will turn and pitch to Sullivan along the near sideline, and he's shoved backwards. A great play by Jaden Rampula pushes Sullivan back to the 24-yard line. A disastrous third down play for the Rough Riders. Well, that play was very, very slow developing. I'm not sure why, but you see uh, kind of waiting for some blockers oh, Excuse me, there. that's Mikey Lee. I'm sorry, 51. Mikey Lee with a big stop there for Wapak. Now forward progress stops it at the 17-yard line rather than the 24, but that was a big play there by Mikey Lee fighting off the block. Yeah, no question about it. So fourth and 10 here for the Rough Riders. Yep. We'll see what they dial up. Look for your tight end. Wallace fakes the handoff, yep. will roll. Looking for the throwback out of the backfield for Keegan Sharp. He floated it, tipped and away. Is that another big play by the St. Mary or by the Wapak defense or what? Corbin Mitchell chased that football down on the throwback and got a fingertip on it. You'll see on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supply replay. A nice throw by Wallace, left it up in the air, and you'll see Mitchell just barely get a fingertip on it to tip it away. Well, that, uh, that pass was a little bit underthrown because Wallace had to throw off his back foot. That's because number 51, Mikey Lee, was in there putting pressure on him again. Somehow he's getting into the backfield. He's disrupted the last two plays for Wapakoneta's defense, and uh, St. Mary's has come up empty. So the or Redskins, excuse me, will start at their own 17-yard line with five minutes to go here in this first half. They'll hand off to Jace Nouse. Nouse swallowed up by the St. Mary's defense. You see Sullivan in on the stop for the Rough Riders. As Nouse really hasn't been able to get going so far here tonight uh, for Wapak. They've given it to him, and he's had to muscle for every yard he's grabbed here so far. Yeah, I thought there looked like there was a little green grass on the outside there. He chose to take it back up into the middle and uh, didn't get much. Now with 24 yards on six carries here in the first half. So uh, St. Mary's doing a nice job of bottling him up. Moyer will be in the shotgun with two receivers to the top of your screen, and he'll roll that way. Moyer will turn fire through the hands of Jordan Schneider. And that's just a, one of those plays Wapak can't afford to have. Yeah, it was a little bit high, but, uh, you know, you, you You'd like the receiver to be able to pull that down. He did get both hands on it, but it, it was it was thrown a little bit high. 4.18 to go here in this second quarter. Third and 10 upcoming here for Wapak. And I don't know that you can stress how big of a play this is for the St. Mary's defense. If they can keep Wapak backed up this far in their own field position and get the football back with a couple minutes to go here, that, that could bode well for the St. Mary's offense. Moyer will be in the shotgun once again. Next throw to his right, looking to the bottom of the screen, and now has to roll. He'll let it fly, gets it to the near sideline. It's a first down and more out to the 35. Ball caught by Will Campbell. Didn't have a catch last week against Otto Glandorf. Grabs that one. It's a big play for the Wapak offense and another Binkley Real Estate first down. Well, and I feel like a little bit of a breakdown on the St. Mary's defense because he was wide, wide open. And Moyer uh, moves to his left, has to throw running to his left, which is very difficult. And you can see there's nobody from St. Mary's around the so receiver. Another Binkley Real Estate first down. First and 10 here for the Redskins. Off their own 35-yard line. Moyer hands off to now, so he'll try to get something going. He is driven into his own or excuse, into his own offensive lineman. And Hunter Mabry was there to turn him back in. And then a whole host of St. Mary's Rough Riders, Hayden Davis in on the stop, as was Logan Compton for St. Mary's. Yeah, really this play is made possible by number 44, uh, Hunter, Hunter Mabry. Mabry. He turned it to turn that play back up into the middle where he had plenty of uh, pursuit coming. So a loss of two there for the Redskins on first down, makes it second and 12. So we got an injured player for St. Mary's as the, as Braden Sullivan subbed out. And as Jacob Kessler will check in for the Rough Riders. And now the clock will begin to roll once again as we approach 3.30 to go here in the first half of tonight's ball game. When you see Moyer runs to the sidelines, there's no signaling for the Wapak offense. He has to run to the coach and get the play and then bring it back, which I think uh, could be a factor later in the game. Moyer 
will let her rip to the far sideline. Caught by Schneider at the 40-yard line. Driven out of bounds. A gain of about seven there for Wapak on second and 12. Yeah, and what I mean, uh, Garrett, by that being a factor is that on a night like tonight where it's really hot, it's really humid, that's about 35 yards that you're running to the sideline to get the play yeah. and then about 35 yards back uh, in some cases, depending on, you know, which side of the field, which hash they're on. This time, this, they happen to be on the close side now, so it's a little shorter, but over but, the course of right. the night. 82 degrees, it's humid. Yeah, that's a lot of extra running that has to be done by Moyer, but uh, he's young, he can handle it. <laughs> Third and five for the Redskins. Moyer will run this time, and he is driven straight backwards. The ball is loose. Keegan Sharp picks it up and is racing down the far sideline. Makes two men miss. He's still on his feet at the 10. Shoved out of bounds. Didn't see what exactly Moyer lost control of the football, but he took a big lick and Keegan Sharp was there for the Rough Riders. Yeah, well, I, I, I saw when he lost the football. That's when somebody drilled him. I mean, he, uh, he got drilled and uh, he's lucky that he was able to get back up. You see there, his yep. whole head pops back. He big, lost the football. Big pop is and then I think, Davis delivered the blow. Yeah, and I think number 17 for Wapak, Naus is going to get called for a face mask. Oh, no, that was uh, that was 54. So I think Tyler there's going to be, yeah, I think there's going to be a personal foul there that's going to move the ball uh, even closer. But you saw the big shot Moyer took on that Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. But a block in the back from St. Mary's is the call. So instead yeah. of the ball being at the 10, it'll be placed. I thought they were going to call a face mask. It looks like they called the block in the back. So 2.24 to go here in the first half. St. Mary's with spectacular field position at the 27-yard line of Wapak. That's a big play there for the Rough Riders. As you saw Moyer take the big shot, and Keegan Sharp was right there to pounce on it as the Rough Riders will go straight T backfield. Wallace will hand off. Bring him to the 20-yard line. It's Braden Sullivan. Well, Garrett, we talked about that. One of the keys of the game is, is those turnovers, yeah. right? Uh, making sure that you value each possession, and now we've seen St. Mary's turned the ball over that led to a Wapak score, and now Wapak has turned the ball over, putting St. Mary's in a great position to be able to capitalize. So a gain of seven there on first down. Straight T backfield. Wallace under center. He'll turn and hand off to Hinkle. Hinkle off left tackle to the 15. Shoves ahead inside the 15-yard line. Deeper into the Matt's plumbing and heating red zone. Matt's heating and cooling red zone, I should say. Yeah, and I think this is where the wing T is especially effective. Uh, a lot of times you see offenses sputter when they get in the red zone because there's less space. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the throwing opportunities, but that isn't what this offense does. It's run based. First and 10 for the Rough Riders. They'll bring it to the near side. Sharp in the open field at the 10 yard line. He stopped at the 11 yard line. So a gain of just three there on first down for Keegan Sharp. Yeah, and a good stop there by number 22, Corbin Mitchell. And, you know, St. Wapak's done a good job so far on those outside pitches and, mm -hmm. and outside runs of really stretching the offense out and really running them to the sideline where they've got nowhere else to go and then making the tackle. They've done a good job so far in this game. Second and seven here for the Rough Riders from the 11. They'll give to Hinkle. He bounces off one tackle inside the 10-yard line, down at the 6-yard line as the clock continues to tick with 45 seconds to play in the half. And I think, frankly, St. Mary's content to let it cl click down that far, and now they'll call Metzger Financial Services timeout. I think that's their final timeout. So we'll step aside. St. Mary's driving. Wapak leading the Rough Riders 15-0 here in the second quarter on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts, sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6061, or you can visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 15-0, Wapak the advantage. Here, as we also, tonight's premier sponsor is Cook & Sons Plumbing and Heating, specializing in old-time service since 1978. 
Find them on Facebook or call 419-738-8956. Rough Riders get close to the end zone, but are going to be brought down just shy as the handoff to Braden Sullivan, as you can see him on the on the ground there. Uh, thought he had a touchdown, but couldn't get it all the way in. But it's a first down that will stop the clock momentarily, but that clock will start right back up, Scott. Well, I think that's where St. Mary's is most effective. Inside the tackles, give it to Hinkle, let him feel his way through the middle and get in the end zone. He'll give it to Hinkle again. He tries to power into there the end is. zone, and he does. A two-yard touchdown run by the St. Mary's Rough Riders. An Allen Davis insurance touchdown run puts them on the scoreboard for the first time here in the final stages of the first half. Well, and a big explosion of fireworks <laughs> here beyond the end zone, and a big puff of smoke says that the uh, St. Mary's Rough Riders have scored. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting out here. I, I didn't know what was going on, but... Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, Garrett, again, we come back to a turnover by Wapak, fumble yeah. by Moyer, led directly to this score and has really brought St. Mary's back into this game. I, I felt like, you know, it was it was getting to be one-sided at 15-0. And St. Mary's now calls timeout to discuss, you know, whether we want to kick the extra point or we want to go for two here. Um, and there, there's a couple different schools for thought. One, you, you want to know how, you want to know as soon as possible whether it's a two-score game or not. And the other school of thought is, don't go chasing the points now. Let that, you know, play out later in the game. Uh, but but it is a, a conversation you got to have right here. Well, yeah, and the key is uh, how confident are you in your kicker? You know, if you, if you feel like your kicker is going to make it for sure, he's seven of eight on the year, so he's a pretty good. A PAT guy, uh, maybe you take the point and, and worry about going for two later if that, if that becomes a factor. It certainly looks as if the offense is on the field as Cody Wallace will step out for the Rough Riders. But I'm going to tell you, I feel like uh, I feel like Aiden Hinkle can get you two yards from anywhere on the field, yeah. including uh, this, you know, uh, the goal line. He's averaging just shy of five and a half so far tonight, so you got to feel pretty confident about two. Well, Wallace he, will go under he, center. He's not in the backfield, though. They'll turn around and hand it off to Keegan Sharp. Does he get in the end zone? Yep. He does. He gets the two-point conversion. Excuse me, that is not Keegan Sharp. That's number 11 for St. Mary's, Caden Sharp. And he gets the two-point conversion to make it 15-8. Yeah, he does a nice job of following his blocker there. Number 62, Greg Felver. He ought to get the credit for that touchdown because he laid out uh, one of the Wapak defenders and then uh, slid off him to make a second block, and that allowed uh, that allowed the touchdown to happen. Nice conversion there, the Pantry Pride two-point conversion to make it 15-8. Wapak has their lead cut to seven, and, and that's a that's a big play, Scott. Here going into the second half. Well, it's a huge momentum changer because now you go into the half. While, if you're St. Mary's, you just scored. You're feeling good about things. You feel like the game's in reach. Now you just got to make a play and turn it around. And if you're Wapak. Uh, you feel like, hey, you know, we just let them back in the game. We've got to step up and do something. Not a lot of time in the second quarter, but uh, but there is time in the game. So, Well, Scott, we talked about it in the, the keys to the game where take care of the football, win the line of scrimmage, uh, but, you know, things like that. You just saw all of that in, you know, a couple of, in one drive where you see Wapak turn the ball over field position was another one. St. Mary's gets the ball to 27-yard line. They don't have to go very far. They win the line of scrimmage on the two-point conversion, and now it's a seven-point game. Yeah, and we talked about special teams. We're going to see that right here on a little kind of a pooch kick there. The ball's loose and finally scooped up by Will Campbell. He'll bring it out to the 30-yard line for Wapak. Yeah, nice job there on special teams by the St. Mary's Rough Riders to cover that kick, but uh, you know, the first score by Wapakoneta was set up by a special teams play and Jolly's return. Yep. So really all three of the keys that we talked about at the top are kind of uh, coming to the forefront in this game. So 20 seconds remain here in the first half and probably wouldn't be surprised if we just saw Wapak kneel to, to end the first half. That's what it looks like as Truesdale and Mextra will be right behind Moyer on first and 10 from the 30. And he will just take a knee. And that'll do it for the first half of play. It certainly has been an interesting one, Scott. We uh, saw Wapak get out to that 15 nothing advantage, but then St. Mary's a couple of different times. Looks like they were going to punch it in, couldn't convert. And then they get a turnover at the end of the half to punch it in to make it 15-8 to here at the halftime break. Wapak leads St. Mary's at halftime here on WOSN.
Time for our halftime adjustment brought to you by Al's Woody's Diner in Wapak. It's Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. It's Garrett C. Ryan and Scott Nurs here at St. Mary's as we get set for second half action. And Scott, in your mind, what's the biggest second half adjustment that St. Mary's and Wapak need to make here for somebody to leave with a victory tonight? Well, I think both teams have to make the adjustment uh, that we talked about at the top, and that is hold on to the football. Two touchdowns have been the results, direct results of turnovers, yeah. and the other one is a result of, of a special teams play, a big punt return for Walpock. They set up touchdowns. Walpock has given up five touchdowns this season so far, and all of them have been less than 30-yard drives by their opponent. So it, it's either a, the result of a fumble or a big special teams play that's set up their opponent to score. So I think from a Walpock standpoint, they've really got to focus on that. Uh, and from St. Mary's standpoint, they were fortunate uh, to, to benefit from a fumble and, and then a long return that set them up uh, with a first and, and, and 10 inside the 20, which led to their only score of the game. So, again, you know, you, you see those special teams and turnovers are having a huge impact on this game for sure. Yeah, and we've seen Wapak has fumbled the ball three times. Only one of him has been pounced on by the Rough Riders, but St. Mary's in their own right, they, they fumbled the ball once as well. Uh, we, to recap the scoring here in the first half, Wapak got on the board first. A five-yard touchdown run by Caleb Moyer made it 7 nothing at the 8:01 mark of the first quarter, and then a one-yard touchdown run by Moyer at the 10:07 mark. And the second quarter made it 15 nothing. and then as Scott alluded to, the fumble recovery by St. Mary's gave them a short field, a two-yard touchdown run by Aiden Hinkle, and then a two-point conversion made it 15-8. to eight. And that is our score here as we begin yeah, the well, third quarter. Wapak gets the ball. they got to stay up. St. Mary's is 17-1 in this stadium. They've won 11 straight. Their only loss has come in a two-overtime loss to Ottawa Glandorf a couple years ago. So they are tough in this stadium. They're only down one score. St. Mary's led in the first half, 76 yards rushing by Aiden Hinkle in the touchdown. Wapak in the first half, two Caleb Moyer touchdown runs. He's got 27 yards, and he also is four for six through the air for 48 yards as the kickoff is scooped up by Jace Nelson. We're underway once again here in the third quarter. Nelson collides with a St. Mary's defender at the 30-yard line. Tristan Gardner there on the stop for the Rough Riders, but Wapak will begin the drive right there to start the third quarter. Yeah, that's a great place to begin, too. They're, they're you know, about the 35, 36-yard line. So good field position for that opening drive for Wapakoneto to see what they can do. And what do you think, Travis Moyer, the, the, the biggest thing that he said to his squad here at the halftime break was that to, to, to kind of get things righted? Well, I, you, know, you know, I think they got to stay with what they do. they got to be confident in what they do. They're, offensively, they're doing an okay job. They've just uh, given up the football. Uh, three times they put it on the turf and, and been fortunate to only lose one of those. Nouse takes the handoff from Moyer. He'll go right up the middle of the field, and Nouse is in the open field out to the 46-yard uh, line. That's a Binkley Real Estate first down on the first carry of the second half. You know, it's good to see Moyer back out there, quarterback, too. He took a shot yeah. late in that four, that second quarter, and uh, which, which, which led to the fumble that uh, St. Mary's was able to score on. But... Uh, you know, he was playing junior high football last year. This is his third game in big boy football playing against, uh, you know, a sizable opponent like St. Mary's. And so uh, it's good to see him bounce back from that. It'll be interesting to see what his confidence is like when he's pressured in the pass game. I'm sure the eighth grade football, the WBL is pretty good, but I'm guessing he probably didn't get hit like that, no. like he did in the first half in, in an eighth grade game as we've got a stoppage in play here as I believe Wapak has called a Metzger Financial Services timeout on the second play. This is the second time we've seen this um, tonight here, but uh, Metzger Financial Services timeout called by Wapak. We'll step aside 15-8. The Redskins have the ball in the lead here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Also, instant replays tonight brought to you by Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. First in 10 upcoming here for the Wapak Redskins after the Metzger Financial Services timeout. You see Caleb Moyer look to the sideline to get further instructions from his father, the ninth-year head coach of the Redskins. They'll send Nelson in motion and give him the football running to the top of the screen. He is swallowed up as Compton makes the stop for St. Mary's. Yeah, he picks up about three yards here on this uh, little inside handoff. 
see number 31 in blue come chasing from his defensive tackle spot. Also a nice job there by, I believe that was Hayden Sharp, or excuse me, Hayden Davis holding on for dear life for the Rough Riders to, to make that just a two-yard gain. So the ball right at the 50-yard line for the Redskins as they're about to cross over into St. Mary's territory. Second and seven. Moyer will go into center once again. He'll turn and hand off to Naus. Naus puts his foot in the ground, spins to the 47-yard line, but that's as far as he got. Yeah, and that's a tough play. That was to the short side of the field. St. Mary's has got the box stacked. Naus didn't have much room to operate. You know, this is a great rivalry. This is one of the oldest rivalries in high school football. They, they've they've uh, 118th meeting, and they first met in 1921. Overall record versus St. Mary's, Wapak is 43, 69, and 5. Uh, and this is the 102, 102nd straight year that these teams have played. I mean, it's just incredible. For That's a long time, they played on Thanksgiving Day as Grant Jolly makes a, makes a reception and spins to the 32-yard line. But they played on Thanksgiving Day. I have to imagine the weather was a little bit different on those Thanksgiving Day <laughs> games than, uh, than we experience here on September 2nd. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, a nice throw here by Moyer. It's interesting because when Moyer gets comfort, comfortable in the pocket, he spins the football in his hands before he throws it. He did not spin at that time. So a little bit rushed. Uh, I think he felt a little anxious maybe as a result of that hit in the second quarter, but uh, still completes the pass. Jolly, their big play man, picks up a, a sizable game there. First and 10 for the Redskins. They'll go traditional wing tee with Nelson Mextro. Mextro gets the handoff. He slips past one tackler. Is able to stay on his feet, brought down at the 26-yard line as Tristan Gardner makes a stop for St. Mary's. Another nice run there by Mextro, who, who wasn't able to really get going there in the first half, but you see him spin his back here on the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay and stumble for a few more yards. Any yards Mextro can get, he's going to take. Well, Mextro's their power back. He only averages about three yards a carry, but uh, typically they're in short yardage situations, so uh, he was able to pick up about six on that carry. Puts him at second and four. Redskins approaching the Mats heating and cooling red zone. Is here at the 26-yard line on second and four. As Moyer will be in the gun this time. They'll put it right in the gut of Naus, and he'll get up to the 20-yard line. Slips off a tackle, and Naus is gone. A 26-yard touchdown run for Jace Naus. Extends the Wapak lead to 21-8. What a fantastic run by Naus. You'll see on the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Slips off a tackler after bouncing into his own offensive lineman. Stiff arm, and he's gone. Well, just great vision by Naus to be able to recognize there was nothing up the middle. He just took a little step to the outside. Wide side of the field had plenty of grass there and waltzes into the end zone for his score. So at Allen Davis Insurance, touchdown run for Jace Naus as they'll trot on the Pantry Pride extra point team as Tristan, or excuse me, Preston Meyer puts it up through the uprights and good. It makes it 22-8 Redskins. And that's Naus' first touchdown on the year. And that's a, that's a nice exclamation point for his first TD. 22-8 to score. Wapak leads on WOSN. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Minster Bank. They're proud of, our, uh, proud of their past and look forward to a promising future. Also, I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. They're local, fast, and friendly. Check them out at icsigns.net. 22-8 the score. Wapak the advantage over St. Mary's after the touchdown drive. Capped off by Jason Nelson's first touchdown run of the season. A 26-yarder made it 22-8 for the Redskins. In the last four times these two squads have met, Scott, uh, a one-score game. And I'm sure St. Mary's would like to get that back down to a one-score game on this upcoming drive. Well, it's worked out for Wapak. Uh, St. Mary's won the toss, and they were stopped on that first possession of the game. St. Uh, Wapak gets the ball first in the second half, and they turn that into a score. So that's that's a big momentum shift. Let's see if St. Mary's can answer here. Ball goes in the end zone on the touchback. Keegan Sharp argued, no, 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 that went out of bounds because he wanted it to 35 rather than the 20. But the official was right there, got a great look at it. And St. Mary's will begin their next drive at the 20-yard line. So 22 to 8 the score, a, an impressive drive to start the second half there, Scott, by the Redskins. Yeah, no question about it. Just rolled down the field. Had a, had a good good play mix, pass and run, and uh, we're able to capitalize by uh, getting into the end zone early in the third quarter. So Cody Wallace will lead the St. Mary's offense back out on the field. The wing tee. They've got Sullivan and Hinkle in the backfield. 
Hand it off out to the 25-yard line. So I believe Hinkle had the carry. So we unpile everybody. Nope, Braden Sullivan got the football there. And you'll see the Layfeld Industrial Water Supplies replay. They just hand it off, and he goes right into Jaden Rampula, and there's just a push forward to get out to the 30, or excuse me, the 26-yard line. So here come the Rough Riders once again. Same wing T formation. It's Mabry and Sullivan in the backfield. They'll give it to Sullivan. Averages just shy of seven yards of carry there in the first half. He got out for a Binkley Real Estate first down. Wanted a face mask. We'll see if we can get a Layfeld Industrial and Water Supplies replay there. Uh, if he's got a case there, we'll get a look at it here. As you see, the focus on number 45. He wanted a face mask penalty. And I... Yeah, I didn't get a great look at it, but I don't think it was ever an egregious face mask because they'll hand it once again to Sullivan. Well, but it's kind of interesting, Garrett. Uh, Aiden Hinkle, we haven't seen him for a couple series, and I'm not sure what's going on. He had 76 yards uh, in the first half, uh, according to our stats, and uh, we haven't seen him since then. So I don't know if he was injured or, or, or what the situation is there. Rough Riders will turn. And pitch out to Sullivan, his third consecutive carry. Picks up a Binkley Real Estate first down. And you're right, Scott, I, I don't know that I can see Aiden Hinkle on the sideline anywhere. Trying to look for him as you get a look at the replay here. Just a turn and pitch to Sullivan. Got a convoy of blockers out in front of him. It's enough for the first down. What a great camera angle. You know, great job by our crew down there picking that up. Uh, you can see his eyes. You can see his face. You can see what he's looking at. Uh, feels like it's coming right into your living room. A little handoff to Mabry this time. Mabry, I don't know if he got caught up with Joey Truesdale, but a bevy of flags on the play. Uh, I don't know if their face masks got connected there or something, but that was an awkward looking run there as uh, Colton Mabry got the carry for the Rough Riders. Yeah, and you see the young official, uh, the back judge on the crew, come in with the flag. Just Mabry got his head turned around. And he wasn't, you know, agreed just that a face mask could happen or anything like that. But that is a face mask. And uh, that's going to be a big, costly penalty for the Wapak defense. So instead of it being still inside St. Mary's territory, they're now down to the 35-yard line of the Wapak defense. Yeah, you get a good look there at Chris Beckstead, the referee on the crew, uh, excellent crew out there tonight. They've done a great job so far in this game. Wallace will hand off to Mabry, nearly brought down from behind. Great job by Mikey Lee from his defensive end spot for Wapak, chasing that down. I believe they leave him unblocked because they don't think he can make the tackle that quickly. But boy, did he shoot off the ball and make the shoestring tackle there for the Redskin defense. Yeah, and a little bit, it looks like a little bit of a, you know, at the mesh point, a little bit of a, a mishandle of the football there, but they were able to, to recover and, and, and have a positive game. Second and seven here for the Rough Riders. They'll pitch to Sullivan. Sullivan along the near sideline, spun down at the 25-yard line. It's going to be right at the first down marker. The official along the near side says it's a Pinkley Real Estate first down. Yeah, and we're getting a heavy dose of uh, Sullivan for sure in this quarter, and he's, he's producing. He's answering the bell. You get another look at him here. You can see uh, he's carrying that football, protecting it, and uh, doing a good job of converting on first down. They'll just shove it straight ahead. I don't know if there was nobody in the middle of the Wapak defense or what, but it was first and ten there, and it's a gain of about three. Or gain of, uh, they're going to say about four, and uh, just shoved it straight ahead. Yes, Sullivan now with 70 yards in the game. Uh, his longest run's 21, but uh, he's averaging about 6.4 yards per carry, so he's very productive, and they're going to him often in this series. Yeah, the, you're right. I think he had six carries at the at the half, so he's got five here on this drive. As Wallace goes under center, they'll hand it off to Sullivan once again. He bounces it out to the near sideline. Still on his feet before he's picked up and driven down at the 13-yard line, but another productive carry by Braden Sullivan. It's another Binkley Real Estate first down. Well, and he paid the price on this one at the end. Mextro came in and, and laid the wood to him. Uh, you can see there Right here, bang, he, he lifts him up. onto and, a thigh. And, and uh, well, that was his teammate. I, I Yeah, no, that was Mextro. So the Rough Riders in the Mats heating and cooling red zone. They'll hand it off up the middle with Sullivan to the 10-yard line. So Sullivan now the leading rusher for the Rough Riders on the evening with 78 yards on the ground. Yeah, a nice, nice bit of ball handling there on the inside handoff by 
Wallace. Uh, but look for Wallace to pull that one of these times because uh, Wapak is really pinching in defensively. There's a lot of green grass on there outside. Ball to 10 yard line. The upcoming play is the 11th of the drive. They'll turn, pitch to Sullivan once again. Inside the 10, still on his feet to the five before a whole host of Redskins will bring him down. But another productive carry by Braden Sullivan, who's got a lot of them here on this drive. Well, it's kind of the old adage, uh, you know, we're going to keep doing the same thing until you stop it. And uh, so far, Wapakoneta's defense has not been able to stop Sullivan, at least on this drive. You see the replay in your right, same play. There's an old Jim Tressel story where he was an offensive coordinator, and they called the same play, I think, eight times in a row. And the head coach said, do we have any other plays, coach? And he said, yep, once they stop this one, I'll, uh, I'll call another one. But you see Sullivan inside the five-yard line as you – you get a look at Greg Felver lost his helmet there on the play. Number 62 will have to come off for a play. Jim Tressel, one of my favorite uh, people in football. He actually uh, walked to my daughter-in-law down the aisle when my son got married. Really? So it was a pretty exciting time, yeah. That's an that, that's a, a interesting bit of trivia there. Yeah, her father was uh, Joe Daniels, quarterback's coach at Ohio State, and he had passed away. and. Uh, Trestle had promised him that if he wasn't around, he would walk her down the aisle, and he did. Fourth and one here for the Rough Riders. They'll turn, get it. They got the first down. Sullivan inside the two-yard line. So it was fourth and about half a yard from the three-yard line. So now St. Mary's has three, four cracks at it from inside the three. Well, and you see Sullivan, when he gets up here, he does a little chest pump here. He's ready. He, he's like, give me the football. I want the football. I'm going to put it in the end zone. I'd be surprised if they go to anybody else at this point. Wallace with a straight team backfield behind him at the two. Turn, gives it to Sullivan. He'll power into the end zone. A two-yard touchdown run for Braden Sullivan. Makes it 22 to 14. Redskins lead, but it's an Allen Davis insurance touchdown by the by the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Well, we got the big explosion down in the end zone here in the uh, south end zone. A big puff of smoke says that for everybody in the area that St. Mary's has just scored a touchdown. And that was, Garrett, that, that whole drive was just pure yeah. power St. Mary's football to the max all the way down the field. St. Mary's on for the Pantry Pride extra point as Logan Rush is on to kick it. Wearing number 86, the snap is back. The hold is down, the kick is up. It's a high end over end kick. It goes through the uprights and good, making it 22-15. Rough Riders get it back down to a one score lead for Wapak. More third quarter action when we return here on WOSN. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Also, touchdown tonight presented by Allen Davis Insurance. Allen Davis Insurance is your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business insurance, and more. 22-15 the advantage for Wapak over at St. Mary's, but we've gotten a couple more Allen Davis Jeff Insurance Ford. touchdowns here in the third quarter. Each side putting seven points on the board after it was 15-8 at the halftime break. But an impressive drive there where St. Mary's just ran. I, I think they I think it was a 14-play drive where they just shoved it right down Wapak's throat, and the Redskins were able to stop them a couple of times, but weren't able to stop them uh, enough, and the Rough Riders punch one in. And then a rough kickoff there by St. Mary's. Goes out of bounds. Yeah, I think they were just trying to pooch kick it, and it got away from them a little bit, too, a little too close to the sideline, went out of bounds, so they're going to get a 35. You know, the last six games these teams have played have been close, and, and we talked about that earlier. The last six games have been decided by three points, seven points in an overtime game, six points in an overtime game, two points, ten points, and six. So it's, it's been basically a one-score game or less. Two out of the last six have been overtime, so uh, neither side is going to quit. Uh, you can guarantee that, and uh, I like St. Mary's answer on their last possession. Caleb Moyer will trot back out to run the Wapak offense. And Scott, you know, there are, I'm sure, sure some folks in, in the Redskin faithful who believe, you know, well, the only reason he's the quarterback is because his dad is the coach. And uh, there's a lot of scrutiny that comes with being the coach's son in, in that position. I know you've got some experience with, you know, coaching your son and things like that, but it's not as easy as people think. No, it's not. And, and I've been in that position. And really what happens is you end up being harder on your own son right. and giving them less, less uh, favor. Than the, uh, than the others who are competing. So you know he's mentally tough. He's a freshman. 
and he's out here competing and doing a great job. And I, I, I feel like he's probably uh, a, a great quarterback in the making. Mextro takes the handoff out to the 30, 40 yard line, excuse me. A gain of a couple there on first down from Extro. Just and his third carry of the night. And again, one of the other advantages, you know, having a son that's a quarterback like that as a head coach is that you, you know that for the most part, you're always going to be on the same page because you've talked together, you spent time together over the years. You've watched videos together. you watched, you know, tons of football together and talked about it. So uh, th there's a real uh, chemistry a lot of times that can develop, especially between a father and son as coach and quarterback. Second and seven here for the Redskins. Moyer in the shotgun. And another timeout called, as you can see, Travis Moyer by the, the official on the far sideline. He'll call a timeout. Uh, Metzger Financial Services timeout. 22-15 the score. Redskins with the advantage in the football here in the third quarter on WOSN. Tonight's extra point sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service that you can count on. Also, First down tonight brought to you by Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you the results that move you. Second and seven upcoming, and Scott now Walpock just with one time out remaining here in the rest of the ball game. Well, we were talking about <coughs> Caleb Moyer, but let's talk about Travis Moyer. You know, he's been at Walpock for nine years now. He's 72 and 20. Before that, he was at Bucyrus Winford where he won 118 games, only lost 28, an 80% winning percentage. And, and he took them to eight playoff games. They had a 58-game regular season winning streak, winning streak, which is just absolutely incredible. Now, Wapak has uh, constantly been a competitive power in Division III uh, in, Southwest, in the Southwest District as they pick up another first down there on the Pinkfield Real Estate first down as Chase Naus carries for about 10 yards there as we approach two minutes remaining here on the least famous recipe scoreboard. 22-15, Wapak the advantage is Moyer in the shotgun. One receiver split out wide to each side. He'll hand off to Naus off left tackle, puts his foot in the ground, gets out past the midfield stripe, and it's going to be cut down about the 49-yard line, but again, it's positive momentum for the Redskins over and over and over again. Yeah, they've run that play about four or five times this game, that same play, and, and really it's resulted in about the same uh, yardage every single time, about three yards, four yards, sets up a second and seven. 145 to go here in this third quarter as the total yardage right about even, 183 for St. Mary's, 180 for the Redskins. And again, I love the down boxes here, and the down box and the uh, first down marker, they've got a, the, the neon signs that show up that show second down and seven to go. Green team split behind Moyer as he'll roll to the far sideline, being chased by Caden Sharp of St. Mary's. Moyer picks up a couple. They'll keep the clock rolling. We'll see where they spot the football. So, Look like we had a big pile up there between a couple of guys in blue, a couple of guys in white got all tangled up. Nothing malicious or anything like that, just a, a whole lot of bodies over there. Yeah, and who, who am I to say there, but I, I, I'm not a big fan of that play. The quarterback keep just taking a wide, uh, but he's taking it to the short side of the field. Not much room there. St. Mary's have got a ton in the box. That's a tough play to pick up positive yard. I'd, I'd rather see Moyer in the wide side of the field where he's got plenty of grass. He can he can stretch it out and look for a seam and maybe pick up a few more yards, but obviously Travis Moyer knows a lot more about football than I do. Third Play and four college. with 30 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. As Moyer lost a handle on the football, he's able to pounce right on it, though, but it's going to be fourth and, fourth and about six from the 48-yard line. Yeah, and that's a huge drive killer right there, momentum shifter. Wapak moving the ball steadily down the field, and then that sets him back now to fourth and about six, as you mentioned. They've got to punt the football. And that looks like that will end the third quarter. So uh, momentum killer there for Wapak. As we've played three quarters, we'll head to the fourth. Redskins with a 22-15 advantage over St. Mary's. Fourth quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Timeouts tonight brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6061 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Kyle Beach on the punt for Wapak after the fumble. Fourth and seven years who begin the fourth quarter of play. Beach with a booming leg 
We'll send it to the 10-yard line. Bounces inside. That go in the end zone. Yes, it did. Was very close to being a coffin corner punt. A heck of an effort there by Kyle Beach, but instead... St. Mary's will start at the 20-yard line. Well, you know, the football is not round. So it takes funny <laughs> bounces, and that could have bounced out at the one or, or it, uh, as it did, took a, a bounce into the end zone. So St. Mary's fortunate they come out at the 20-yard line. You know, Garrett, in this game, we now have almost dead even yardage. Total yards for St. Mary's is 183. Wapak has 180, but they do lead on the scoreboard set up by uh, a couple short yardage situations, but uh, it very evenly matched game. 15 first downs for St. Mary's uh, and only nine for Wapak. Colton Mabry, the carry for St. Mary's, a uh, seven yard gain or an eight yard gain there on first down. A nice carry by the 5'11", 200 pound sophomore. As Colton Mabry now has four carries on the evening. 14 yards, seven of them coming on that last carry. Rough Riders go back under center. Wallace will just shove it straight ahead, trying to get the first down. Didn't get to the 30-yard line. Got about the 28 and a half. So it'll be third and short here. And Scott, that last touchdown drive for St. Mary's, the longest touchdown drive Wapak's given up all season. And I'm sure the Rough Riders would like to would like to put another one on the board, but maybe not be forced to hand it to Braden Sullivan 11 of 14 times. Well, and again, a noticeable absence of Aiden Hinkle uh, in the offense. But, uh, you know, I, I suspect at halftime there was some spirited uh, conversation with the offensive line because they've come out for St. Mary's in this second half and they've exerted their dominance in the trenches. Third and one in the first down corralled by Braden Sullivan there. So he'll pick up a Binkley Real Estate first down to move the chains once again and keep the football for the Rough Riders. wapakoneta has got to find an answer for uh, Sullivan. Take a look at the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Just needed a couple of yards there. Slips through the grasp of Joey Truesdale and got the first down. But uh, nothing too fancy. They were just shoving straight ahead. But if you, you can't go broke taking a profit. Handoff this time to Sharp. Or excuse me. New running back in for the Rough Riders. As Kevin, Kevin Perry gets his first call of the night. And Perry comes up slow. A little gimpy. Just off tackle to the left side. He got gobbled up by Tyler Hauser. We've called his name a couple of different times from that defensive tackle spot. The, the, the battle in the trenches tonight has been an interesting one. St. Mary's offensive line, uh, very robust, but uh, Wapak not as big, but their defensive line has caused havoc at times. Yeah, and I think that was Perry's first carry of the year. Yeah. Oh. Got another carry here to Mabry. Got a couple of yards. And it's going to make it third and five is what St. Mary's is faced with here as we are under 10 minutes remaining on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. So third and five as you approach midfield here. Scott, is this four down territory for the Rough Riders? Uh, I would say probably not in a one score game. Uh, not at this time. Rough Riders will hand off to Keegan Sharp. Sharp to the 40. Grant Jolly, Caden Ware in on the stop for the Rough Riders. Gain of about four when they needed five. Yeah, you're going to see about six white shirts out here. He had nowhere to go. He's waiting for a crease, looking for something to develop, and there's nice. just too much white jersey out there. That's a nice play by Grant Jolly getting blocked, and he spun his back towards the middle of the field to try to spin that back around. So the Rough Riders will go for it on fourth and one. Wow. Straight tee backfield behind Wallace. Big We've seen play. him keep it a couple of times. Sullivan got the carry. He's out to the 47, 48-yard line. It's enough for a Binkley Real Estate first down. Gutsy call there in your own territory. Yeah, it is in a one-score game. I like it, though. Uh, you know, Jay Sullivan, or Braden Sullivan, is not uh, – been stopped yet tonight, so you know what would lead you to think he can't pick up one yard, and he does. Sullivan averaging five and a half yards. He's now at 100 for the evening after that six yard carry. So he'll go straight T backfield once again. Wallace will hand off to Sharp. He's got a bevy of blockers here along the near sideline into Wapak territory, out of bounds at the 45 yard line. But Keegan Sharp getting a couple of outside carries here in the second half. Yeah, and I'm watching Wallace, and, and, and he's carrying out his fake, and there is nobody on Wapak's defense that's staying with him. I look for him to uh, pull one of these handoffs, just pull it, tuck it, and run, 
for a long game. Gain of eight there on first down after the Bankley Real Estate first down. Brings up second and two for the Rough Riders if they can as they've continued to push their way down the field. Wallace hands off as he gave it to, I believe, number 11, Caden Sharp that time. And he did get the carry. Take a look at the Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Caden Sharp on the carry. Got shoved back just a little bit. Nice penetration there by the Wapak defense. Under eight minutes here. Third and two. Rough Riders faced with at the 45-yard line. Power T backfield behind Wallace. He'll hand off to Sharp, nearly brought down to the backfield. Instead, he's going to go for a long run. Keegan Sharp got one man to beat. Can he get there? He can. It's a 43-yard touchdown run for Keegan Sharp, and it puts it down the lead, down to one. It's 22-21. Rougher. Redskins, excuse me, but a big run from Keegan Sharp has cut the lead to one. Yeah, Wapak had him bottled up in the backfield here. I thought he was going to be uh, held for a loss in the play, and he's able to elude a couple tacklers, gets on the edge. There's nobody out there, and it's just a foot race, and he wins that. Keegan Sharp, 43-yard touchdown run on Allen Davis Insurance touchdown, and that will send the PAT unit on for St. Mary's, looking to tie the game with a Pantry Pride extra point. And again, a noticeable absence. The leading rusher in the WBL, Aiden Hickel, has been out since uh, mid-second quarter, but St. Mary's has risen to the challenge. The snap is and back. The hold is down game. is up. The kick is up and good. And we are tied at 22 with 7.38 to go in the fourth here on WOSN. Mark Labor Day down on your calendar. The second annual LifeWise 5K presented by the Tom All Family Dealerships. The race begins on at Sunnydale House, where LifeWise Elida begins its second year. And more to celebrate as the launch of academies in Allen East and Spencerville take place in September. To sign up, Google Elida LifeWise 5K and follow the link to runsignup.com. LifeWise of Allen County 5K is presented by Tom All Family Dealerships. It's on Labor Day at 9 a.m. in Elida. All tied at 22 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard as St. Mary's gets the 43-yard touchdown run by Keegan Sharp. And what an impressive play, Scott. You mentioned it. It looked like he was going to be bottled up in the backfield. Instead, it goes for a 43-yard touchdown. Well, and that's 80 yards that they marched down the field. Uh, they're up to 283 yards of total offense thus far in the game. Ball corralled by Corbin Mitchell of Wapak. Short kick. He's brought down to the 31-yard line, so uh, pretty somewhat decent field position here for the Redskins to start. Yeah, and, th and, th and this is a battle right now of mental toughness because Wapakoneta, you know, has allowed, or I shouldn't say allowed, but St. Mary's has got back into this game, mm -hmm. and they, they basically smashed him in the mouth twice. Two straight drives down the field for touchdowns, powerful running football, smash mouth football. Wapak has to answer here. They've got to have some positive gain in this possession. Mextro to the left of Moyer in the shotgun. The freshman quarterback takes a snap and hands off to Mextro. He's got a crease up to the 40-yard line, very close to a Binkley Real Estate first down. Got to get to the 42, might have got to the 41 and a half. Yeah, and you're going to have a second short yardage, I believe. And I think I think this is an opportunity where you may want to throw the football. Mm -hmm. Take it, take a take a shot and see what you can come up with because St. Mary's has got nine nine guys in the box. They're really playing that inside game pretty tough. And as long as you don't, you know, take a sack or throw an interception, you can live to find another day on third down if it's incomplete. Right. Moyer in the shotgun once again. He'll pump fake. And now we'll throw on the play action. Leaves it high up in the air, almost like a punt. And nobody can come down with it at the 35-yard line. But a couple of great efforts there by Keegan Sharp and Jordan Schneider of Wapak. But neither one of them could come down with it. Yeah, father and son are going to have a talk about that play <laughs> later tonight, I can guarantee you. You know, you don't want your quarterback throwing off their back foot when they're trying to throw deep. Because what you get then is, is a pass like that that was kind of... Up in the air for a long time. Seemed like it was up there forever. Yes, it did. They're very fortunate that that wasn't picked. 6.47 to go in tonight's ball game. Third and one for the Redskins. 
there at the 41 yard line. Got to get to the 42. Yeah, go to Mextro. Moyer under center. They'll turn and it's bottled up. A big play by Caden Sharp from his linebacker spot. A 5'11 senior had 20 tackles coming into tonight and he gobbles that up on third and one. Well, they, uh, they were thinking exactly what I was thinking. They keyed on Mextroth, and he got the football, and he's fortunate to hold on to that football because St. Mary's had a couple defenders that were in there right at the mess point, right at the handoff. Sharp lined up as the extra defensive lineman to make it a 5-2 there on third and one and just slipped through a blocker and was able to swallow that up, and that's a big defensive play for St. Mary's. Beach back deep to punt. Trying to get a boot oh. away, nearly blocked. Might have been tipped. Yeah, I think it was tipped a little bit. Takes a really good St. Mary's bounce. They're going to get the football at the 40-yard line. Uh, what a couple of plays there by St. Mary's. After trailing there at the halftime break, all the momentum has swung to the guys in blue. Uh, just a, a couple of really impressive offensive drives and then a big stop there defensively for St. Mary's. You can feel the momentum come to this side of the stadium. Yeah, no question about it. St. Mary's definitely has the momentum. They've got time, plenty of time, just under six minutes. They can, uh, you know, they can stay within their offensive scheme. And the, we, we mentioned the total yards at one point where St. Mary's had three more total yards than Wapak does. St. Mary's now, it was 183 to 180. It's now St. Mary's 263 to Wapak 186. So the second half has been dominated by the Rough Riders. They'll hand off to Mabry, running left. Out in the open field to the 50-yard line. Barrels for a Binkley Real Estate first down, but another positive play there for the Rough Riders. As Colton Mabry carries it for a 12-yard gain. You see the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay just meandering his way through that Wapak defense, runs through a tackler. Well, again, let's give some credit to the St. Mary's offensive line, Xavier LeClaire, Greg Felver, Caleb Miller, Trent Wyckoff, and Braden Saylor. Those guys are doing the job up front, which are allowing these running backs to get two, three, four yards before they're even meeting any kind of contact. First and 10 from midfield. They'll give it to Sullivan. He gets out to the 46-yard line. So it's a gain of four. So we approach five and a half minutes to play on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Now, now, once in a while from the wing tee, you can throw the football. I don't think St. Mary's will do it here. But at some point in this drive, look for them to throw the football to get a big chunk play or to stop the clock to uh, allow them to, to continue with their offensive scheme, which is run the football. And a lot of those times you get in those situations where, you know, you've ran the same play over and over again and you, you think a, line, or a tight end's going up to block a linebacker and, oh, he's slipping right behind you as Sullivan takes the carry and spins, gets to the 40, still churning, his, or excuse me, the 45, and gets to about the 42-yard line. But some of those times you, you, you put it in the air when, when the defense least expects it. Yeah, Sullivan doing a nice job battling here. We're down under five minutes, so there's got to be a little bit of a uh, little bit of pace here. St. Mary's has got to pick it up just a little bit. Third and two is what faces the Rough Riders here with four and a half minutes to go. And we'll see what St. Mary's dials up from the 42-yard line. It's a straight tee backfield behind Wallace. And he'll turn, hand off to Sullivan. He's got another carry. Gets the Binkley Real Estate first down. Brayden Sullivan now with 22 Wapak carries. thinks they have the football. Oh, Joey Truesdale comes out of the pile with it. He can't believe that they don't have it. You see the we'll see the replay. A handoff to Sharp, I believe. Nope, Sullivan's got the ball. And as he's up, oh, <laughs> Joey Truesdale might have a case there. Yeah, I think uh, maybe his knee was down, so they ruled him down by contact. So St. Enough Mary's, for the first down. Yeah, St. Mary's retains possession. First and 10, it's another Binkley Real Estate first down. As they'll give to Mabry running left. Has to slip through a tackler and does. Meets a man at the 35-yard line to the 34. Stays in bounds, so the clock continues to tick. And at this point, St. Mary's, as obviously they want to score, but it, are they also – conscious of the clock and not wanting to give the football back to Wapak with any time with as much time or any time at all really yeah I mean I think they're they're gonna this is a, this is the drive of the game right you're gonna go and uh, and hopefully use all the clock 
I'd like to see Wallace run that same play, only pull the football because mm -hmm. Wapak is really, you know, their, their adrenaline's high, they're over pursuing, and I think he has an opportunity to really take this to the wide side of the field. Wallace under center, hands off to Sharp. Or excuse me, Sullivan with the carry. Yeah, Sullivan's done a nice job all night of when he when when the contact happens, he still picks up another couple yards yeah, after the, contact, falling forward. The he 45s for each side have met a couple of times where it's just rock meat, hard place, and somebody's got to move. Joey Truesdale and Braden Sullivan have have met a couple of different times in the in in, in the hole where somebody's going to win one and somebody's going to lose one. 2.45 to go in this Western Buckeye League matchup between the Angeles County rivals. St. Mary's goes under center once again. Wallace hands off to Sullivan as Wapak tried to time up the snap. Did he get to the first down? He's going to be very close to the Binkley Real Estate first down. No whistle yet. And finally. Yeah, I think forward progress is going to give him the first down. Yeah, you see the official motioning. So that's another big play there for the Rough Riders. As they'll move the chains. You see the Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies replay. Sullivan just keeps churning. He got to the first down stick, and then everybody stands everybody else up. You're trying to see if you can't push them back, but it's enough for a first down, and the ball's at the between the 27 and 28-yard lines. Yeah, and I think I, I, I would credit that to Summer, you know, in the offseason weightlifting. Obviously, he's uh, spent a lot of time lifting, strengthening those legs because he's strong. Wallace hands off to Keegan Sharp. Sharp slips through a tackler, gets to the 25-yard line. Another play where Keegan Sharp probably could have or should have been swallowed up in the backfield and somehow gets back to at least the line of scrimmage, but it's a gain of about a yard and a half there by the senior. See right there, Jaden Rampula almost had him. Grant Jolly comes in to try to make the stop before finally a whole pile of white shirts pushes him back. Yeah, and this is just power football right now. 90 seconds upcoming in the ball game. Wapak 1-1, one one, St. Mary's 2-0. and oh. Tied at 22 here in the fourth quarter as Caleb Miller prepares to snap the football back to Cody Wallace. He'll hand off to Mabry. Mabry patiently waiting, finds his hole. Out to the 23, so again, it's just a couple as we approach one minute to go here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Mabry does a nice job here of waiting patiently and then finding a little crease, a little seam, just to pick up a couple yards there. Picks up uh, enough for it to be third down and about five or six. St. Mary's calls a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll step aside as well. Tied at 22, 103 remaining in the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Tied at 22 with 106 to go here in the fourth quarter on WOSN. Garrett Seawright and Scott Nurse with you on third and six for the Rough Riders with the straight tee backfield. They'll turn and pitch to Sullivan. Got to the 20-yard line, had to get to the 17, so it's going to be fourth and short with under a minute to go. And we'll see what St. Mary's does with the clock here. Assume they'll let it tick down as Travis Moyer, very close to yeah, the Saint, official on the far side. St. Mary's has two timeouts left but they are letting this clock go. So fourth and three is what faces the Rough Riders in a 22-22 game with the ball at the 21-yard line. So they'll let the clock tick all the way down. And then take the timeout and go for it on fourth down. That way it leaves Wapak, if they don't get it, virtually no time. So St. Mary's with 20 seconds left in a fourth and four. Logan Rush was seven of eight on extra points coming into this into tonight's game. He has made both of his extra point attempts. So the ball's at the 21-yard line to make it a 38-yard field goal, roughly. Yeah, you, you feel good about a 38-yard field goal, or you, you're averaging uh, five yards a carry. You need three. It's a it's a difficult decision. Yeah, it is a difficult decision, and they've done a good job here of clock management. I think if they don't get it, uh, Wapak doesn't have much time to do much of anything. We're going into overtime. So, um, so a kick certainly is a good option, but I, I think that they're going to come back with Sullivan uh, yeah. in some way. I, I would look for him to be kind of towards the, right, the wide side of the field 
he's had pretty good success in this game, running a quick pitch to the outside and letting him find a crease. You know he's going to fall forward. They'll be pretty close to it. And then they have timeouts left. They can call a timeout um, and, and do something with it there. And Sullivan's an explosive athlete in the open field. I don't know if you just turn and pitch it, but it looks like they are going to trot out Logan Rush for a field goal attempt. Sullivan will be the holder. So the ball's at the 21-yard line. It will be a 39-yard field goal attempt. No, it looks like Jay Schaefer going to come on for the field goal attempt. Yeah. And it looks like Wampok's going to call a Metzger Financial Services timeout and try to freeze him. So St. Mary's has now decided they're going to kick a field goal. Now that Wampok is calling timeout, does that change your mind at all? Uh, I'm not sure if it changes my mind. The thing that I would be cautious of if I'm Wapak, and I'm sure they're talking about it here, is uh, just be careful that they're actually going to kick the field goal. They don't pick the ball up and, and try to make a uh, play out of it, a run, or, or a quick little easy toss pass enough to get the first down. So fourth and three. I, I just wonder if, if – St. Mary's head coach Bo Fry in his second season, 14-3 uh, record. If he doesn't stand there and go, you know what, it's more likely we get three yards on a carry than it is we make a 39-yard field goal, right? Right, and they still have a timeout. And, and, and even if they decide to kick the field goal, um, should they get the first down, you'll be closer, you know? Right. So uh, a 38-yard field goal is, is in high school football is Pretty long field goal. Yeah, nope, it looks like they'll keep Schaefer out on the field. So Jay Schaefer is looking at a 39-yard field goal attempt as Braden Sullivan will catch the snap at the, or excuse me, it's a 37-yard field goal. He's at the 27-yard line. So a 37-yard field goal upcoming. The snap is back, the hold is down, and it's blocked. It's corralled by Wapak, and they're coming back the other way. Grant Jolly in the open field is brought down at the 47-yard line. St. Mary's blocked a field goal last week against Defiance and returned it to the house for 95 yards. And now Wapak's got 10 seconds to try to get into field goal range of their own after Jolly returns it out to the 46-yard line. Yeah, great heads-up play by Jolly to uh, to catch this blocked extra er, field goal and take off running. They, they, Wapak has an opportunity. Moyer's got an arm. He can throw the football. They have time maybe for two plays if they're able to uh, complete a pass, maybe get out of bounds, and then throw one into the end zone. Yeah, you got to get out of bounds here because the way the clock works now is once the ball is set, the clock begins once again. So we'll see what Wapak dials up here. Ten seconds remain in the fourth quarter as Moyer will be in the shotgun. One wide receiver to the bottom of your screen, and they'll just hand off to Jace Nouse and get him in the open field. Nouse at the 45, brought down shy of the first down marker, and that will do it. We've played four quarters, and we'll head to overtime for the third time in the last five years these two schools have met. 22 all after four quarters. We'll settle it in overtime when we return here on WOSN. Overtime about to begin as we get a look at the coin toss as we head to overtime. And, Scott, uh, take, you're going to take us through the overtime rules. Yeah, the overtime rules are they, uh, they, they have a coin toss. The winner has a choice of offense or defense or the end of the field that they want to defend. Looks um, like St. Mary's has won the toss. And then uh, for turnovers and, or timeouts and timing score, they get one timeout per team per overtime period. Um, and any unused – timeouts that they have do not carry over. The play clock is used. There's one minute between scores, two minutes between overtime periods should we have multiple. Scoring is either a touchdown, field goal, and try only. So from the first overtime period, each team is going to have a series of downs, first and ten at the 20-yard line, and um, they'll, they'll each team will have an opportunity to possess the football. So even if uh, one team is to score, the other team is going to get a chance to answer that score. And then, uh, you know, at the end of each overtime period, whoever scored the most obviously wins. So it's virtually like extra innings in baseball. Or, or it's extra innings in baseball. There will be a top of the first overtime and a bottom of the first overtime. No matter what happens in the top of the first overtime. That's right. Then St. Mary's is going to get a crack at it. So St. Mary's won the toss, elected to play defense first. Wapak says we want to play away from the St. Mary's student section into the end zone. So they will. Wapak will start first, first and ten from the 20-yard line, and will go from there. 
Yeah, and that makes sense. If you're St. Mary's, you win the toss. That way you know what you have to do, yeah. right? You know if uh, if they score a touchdown, that then you've got to answer. If they hit, hit a field goal, you have a chance to win the game. Uh, if they get a stop completely, then any score wins. So we're tied at 22 as the top of the first overtime begins. Wapak has the football at their own 20 yard, or at the 20 yard line, first and 10. Moyer in the shotgun with Naus to his left. Naus will take the handoff. Off left tackle, lost his footing at the 18 yard line. Yeah, he saw number 28 out there, Heath Dilsaver, and. Um, Tried to tried to make a cutback and just loses his footing here. Uh, otherwise, I think he he picks up a few more yards. Yeah, you just saw that right foot lose a little bit of grip there, and instead of a four yard carry, it's a it's a two yard carry. Well, in this time of the night, it's gone from a real hot day to kind of a cooled off yeah. evening, and that dew settling on the grass. Even though it's turf, it still gets a little slick sometimes. Moyer rolling to his He's right. He's got an open man. Throws it. Caught by Schneider in the open field at the four, at the one. He's down just shy of the goal line. Jordan Schneider, I believe his first catch of the night. Take a look at the Leifeld Industrial and Welding Supplies replay. Schneider on the out route, catches it, slips through the tackle of Keegan Sharp, gets down inside to five, and is brought down at the one. A nice pitch and catch there on second down. Yeah, and I think that's Schneider's first catch of the year. We don't have any stats on him. Uh, as having any receiving yards this year. So uh, big, big, huge catch there. And I, I think you look for Naus or Mextroth right here. Mextro had two, two one-yard touchdown runs last week, and it's the third rushing touchdown of the night for Caleb Moyer to put Wapak on the board first in overtime, 28-22. Yeah, and that's tough to stop from one yard out. You're going to see Mextroth hit Moyer right in the back and just, uh, you know, push him into the end zone. That's huge to get on the board with the touchdown. Now this extra point becomes key. Yeah, that Allen Davis insurance touchdown is big there for Wapak, and now they'll trot out Preston Meyer for the extra point, the pantry pride extra point, looking to make it 29-22. Snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights, and good. 29-22, Wapak the advantage over St. Mary's. Yeah, that was a solid extra point. That was that was good from 30 yards. Take a look at the replay there. As you see Preston Meyer puts an ice boot into it. Pantry Pride bringing you that extra point. So now St. Mary's tries to answer. Rough Riders put two touchdowns on the board here in the second half compared to Wapak's one. You know, the challenge is that offense for St. Mary's has been on the field almost the entire second half. You know, we talked about uh, St. Mary's is at 28 minutes of time of possession uh, for the game, and they were only at 10 or 11 at halftime. So they, they have really possessed the ball most of the second half. And, you know, you got to wonder, do they have a, enough in them to finish this last drive? you got to assume they do, but uh, that could be a factor. So we go to the bottom of this first overtime. St. Mary's needs a touchdown and an extra point to extend the game or a touchdown and a two-point conversion to win. My bet Sullivan gets it. Cody Wallace will go under center. They'll hand off to Sullivan right up the gut. He's swallowed up by the Wapak defense, and they'll push him back. But forward progress gets him to about the 17-yard line. Yeah, it'll be second and about uh, seven. Take a look at the replay. Sullivan, the middle back there. Just grabbed by Rampula, and Rampula pulls him backwards. Caden Ware comes in at the final moments to help with that tackle. Second and seven, St. Mary's looking to punch one in and extend the game. Wing T this time. Give to Sullivan once again. He is gobbled up. Caden Ware makes a big play there, and it's going to push back the Rough Riders a yard to make it third and eight. Well, the Wapak defense is keying on Wallace now. They know that he's their man. He's brought him this far in the second half. I'd like to see, again, a little play action fake and maybe roll uh, Wallace out and give him an opportunity like a tight end drag, something where it's a high percentage pass or maybe even get him out there on the wide side of the field and allow him to run the football. Third and eight for the Rough Riders here. Need a first down. They'll turn and pitch to Sullivan. His 28th carry of the night stopped just 
from before they can get anything going. A big defensive play there by the Redskins will make it fourth and long for the Riders. Well, and Caden Ware, number 64 on the end for Wapak, makes this play. He doesn't get the tackle necessarily, but he causes Wallace uh, Sullivan to have to cut back in on the inside. There's nothing there. St. Mary's will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout, their only timeout here in the overtime period, to talk about what they're going to do on fourth and seven. And not a lot of plays in a wing T playbook for fourth and seven here, Scott. No, that's what I say. Uh, I, I've had two sons that have played in the wing T, been very successful in it at uh, Spencerville under uh, Coach John Zerby when he was there. Um, and, um, you know, one of the plays that they run a lot of times because you have a lot of misdirection is you'll fake that play. You'll have a play action fake handoff and then roll your quarterback out uh, in, into the, the, the towards the sideline so he's got some room to roll and then bring a tight end from that weak side and kind of drag them across the middle. A lot of times that's very effective because you have the defense over pursuing, coming at the quarterback, and you get that tight end that can slide in behind it. So um, look for something like that. You never know. Uh, St. Mary's has had halfback passes before. Yeah. Um, I mean, they beat Wapak a few years ago on a halfback pass. Yeah, uh, so, you, you know, you, and Moyer was there, so right. he's going to be aware of that. I'm sure he remembers it right. well. Uh, so, so you know, you you got to think of all those things. And really, with your Wapak, you got to make sure that you have sound defense and, and know your assignment because the worst thing that can happen is St. Mary's scores – and we play another overtime. So if you're Wapak, you, can, you, you can't really lose in this situation. You can only tie. So fourth in the ball game here, seven yards to go for the Rough Riders. Wallace will roll to the right, has a bevy of blockers, and he's not going to get the first down. The game is over, and Wapak hangs on for a 29-22 victory after they bring Cody Wallace down shy of the first down marker. Wow. You see the jubilation there on Wapak's faces. They, they got pushed around there in the second half, Scott, and when push came to shove, they needed to stop defensively, and they got it. Well, no question about it. St. Mary's was dominating this game in the second half, and I really felt like Wapak was going down. And then when we got into overtime, it seems like it just shifted. Uh, St. Mar Mary's was unable to stop Wapak. Wapak scores kind of, you know, methodically and then uh, comes up big defensively and shuts down that St. Mary's offense. You see it on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard, 29-22. Wapak beats St. Mary's. We'll head down, come back with some post-game response from head coach Travis Moyer. Wapak victorious, 29-22 here on WOSN. Back here at St. Mary's, wrapping up a Wapak 29-22 victory in overtime against the Rough Riders, and joined with Wapak head coach Travis Moyer now. And Travis, for the second consecutive week, when you needed a stop from your defense, you got it. We really did, and I thought our defense played pretty well throughout the entire game. Obviously, they controlled the ball a little bit in the second half, but we knew if we are going to be successful this year, we had to play really well defensively, and I thought guys stepped up and made some big plays for us, especially when our backs were against the wall, and uh, really credit our entire defense, our coaching staff, for putting together a great game plan, our kids going out there and finding a way to get it done. You told us one of the keys to the game was going to be special teams play. You get a big punt return in the first first quarter that sets you up for a touchdown. Yeah. You get a blocked field goal at the end of the game to take it to overtime. Uh, the, the special teams came into play. You, you were right that it was going to be a key, and I, I think you guys might have won that battle. Well, I think anytime you know you're going to play in a game like this, you have to play well in all three phases, and obviously special teams is just as important a phase as in offense and defense, and uh, really credit those kids for making plays, credit our coaches uh, for putting our kids in an opportunity to be successful and our kids going out and executing a situation. Uh, your quarterback is a, is a kid you know well, took a big shot there and, and fumbled the football but came back, battled back, had three rushing touchdowns tonight. Uh, what, what can you say about Caleb's poise tonight to, to battle back after a, a mistake that I think a lot of folks would have fumbled the football there, but to, to score the game-winning touchdown, have three touchdown runs, a, a big night for him. Well, I just think it wasn't always pretty. You know, obviously we had our mistakes out there, but, you know, we have high expectations that play position. We expect that position to play well, uh, you know, and, and, and put us in a position to score points. And, uh, you know, I thought he made plays when we needed it, but credit those guys up front, credit the guys around him for stepping up and making big plays when we needed it. But, uh, you know, we need to continue to play well at that position. We need to continue to grow, continue to work hard. Uh, it's the third time in five years you played an overtime game with St. Mary's. What it is about these two schools that, that always ends, you know, it's the fifth straight one-score game you've played in. What is it about these two that, that all these games are tight? 
Well, I just I think it's important to both programs. It's important to both communities. And, uh, you know, there, there's nothing greater than coming out on a Friday night and competing in this type of environment. And, uh, you know, players play in our program for opportunities like this. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we've been able to find a way to win. Well, congratulations on the win. We'll see you next Friday against Van Wert. Thanks so much for having us. That's Wapak head coach Travis Moyer joining us here as the Redskins victorious 29-22 over the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Joined now with Scott Nurse. And, Scott, uh, an impressive victory pulled out there by Wapak. And like I asked Travis, you know, they needed a stop and, and got one at the, the most opportune time. Yeah, no question about it. And, you know, both these communities are so close together that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of blood going on here boiling on a Friday night. And it was just an absolutely great game. So it's time to name our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Who in your eyes stood out the most and, and has earned the Stolly Hustle Award win? Well, I kind of went back and forth. I, I like Caden Ware defensively. I thought mm -hmm. he made some huge plays defensively and part of that offensive line that, that Coach Moyer just talked about. But ultimately, we went with Caleb Moyer for a couple reasons. He scored three touchdowns, but I thought, like uh, Coach Moyer said, after the, he got rocked, and fumbled the football. He really came back and handled himself well. And I think for a freshman to have that kind of composure and to be able to direct the offense in a game like this where there's so much pressure and so much on the line in an overtime situation, he led them to the, the, the final score that, that allowed them to win the game. So for that, we feel like uh, Caleb Moyer is our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Three touchdown runs, like C Travis Moyer said, it wasn't always pretty, but the freshman quarterback is our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight here as Wapak takes down St. Mary's 29-22. to For our fantastic WOSN crew and Scott Nurse, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from St. Mary's here on WOSN. <laughs>